In my last video, I talked about common mistakes that I see people make when they're getting started in an implicit differentiation problem. If you want to go check that out, just go ahead and click over there. And in this video today, we're going to be kind of continuing on in that topic. And I'm going to be going over common mistakes that I see people make in basically the middle of an implicit differentiation problem. Once you've kind of gotten set up and you need to actually start taking the derivative of your function with respect to whatever your variable is, there's a couple things that I've seen a lot of students do wrong, including myself. I definitely made these mistakes all the time when I was first learning how to do implicit differentiation. And I want to help you avoid those mistakes so that you can kind of speed up the learning process and get the right answer a lot more often. If that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video. And if you do get some value out of this video along the way, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Really appreciate that. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into these common mistakes and I'll show you how to avoid them. So a very common problem that I see people run into in this second step, again, there's actually kind of two, two main problems when you're differentiating with respect to your variable. Okay. So this is the, the key kind of worded wording here. We are differentiating with respect to your variable. So what does that mean? Well, that means based on whatever you kind of figured out, whatever letter you determined was your variable in this first step here, that is the thing you need to differentiate with respect to. So in this case, going back to this example here, we would have to differentiate with respect to X. So what that means is we would take, since we're differentiating with respect to X, we would take D DX of both sides of our equation. So we're taking the derivative of all of this with respect to X. What that means is every time you see an X, every time you see your variable, taking the derivative of a term that only contains your variable, only contains X's, it's gonna behave the way you would expect, okay? Um, so in this case, all of these terms, this is all kind of like one big term right here. All of these terms, have a Y in them. So none of the terms in this case would behave the way we would expect when we differentiate that. And what I mean is, let's say we're taking like the derivative of uh, X squared with respect to X. This only has your variable. This only has X's in it. The derivative would just be found using the power rule, right? It's gonna behave the way you would expect. It's gonna be kind of the, the typical tricks you know for taking the derivative of a function. However, if we're taking the derivative of a term that has your function in it, a, a, a term that has y's in it, so in this case we have one here, we have one here, we have one here. All three of our kind of main terms in this equation all have our function y in it. What that means is if we take the derivative of something with respect to x, sorry, not with respect to y, but with respect to x, and it has a y in it, this is not just gonna behave the way we would expect it to, or the way we would kind of, you know, think we could just use our typical derivative tricks to find the derivative of. What I mean by that is we can't just use power rule to take the derivative of y squared with respect to x. And the reason for that is y is a function of x. So what that means is the derivative of y squared with respect to x is not just 2y, right? We can't just use the power rule, bring our two down in front and leave the y as y. It's not gonna work like that. So that is the common, very common mistake I see in this second step of implicit differentiation problems here. Well, how do you fix that? Well, it's really, well, I should say it's kind of hard to wrap your head around when you're learning it. So don't worry if it's, this is a common mistake you're having too, because I used to run into this problem and I made this mistake so many times when I was learning implicit differentiation. Um, and pretty much everyone I've ever tutored in implicit differentiation also makes the same mistake. So don't beat yourself up if you keep making this mistake, but here's how you can fix it, okay? So if we're taking the derivative of a term that has y's in it with respect to x, what you wanna keep in mind is y, since we determined is our function, x is our variable, that means y is a function of x. So don't think of y as y in this case. Think of it as some unknown function that is made up of x's that we are taking the derivative of. So in this case, y squared should instead be thought of as f of x all in parentheses raised up to some power 
in this case, two. Now, when you're looking at this, you're probably saying, well, how the heck am I supposed to take the derivative of f of x squared? That doesn't even make any sense. f of x is not an actual function we have here. We have no information about what this f of x is. And you're right, that is really weird and a, a strange concept to kind of wrap your head around. So in implicit differentiation problems, the reason we are even doing implicit differentiation in the first place is because we don't have an explicit function for y, right? If, you, if you're given something like find the derivative of y equals x cubed plus 2x plus sine x, this is an explicit function for y. What, what I mean by that is we have y equals just a bunch of x's, right? There's not like y's and x's all like intermingled and stuck together. We can solve for y and get some function for y. Well, in this case, or I should say in most cases where you're applying implicit differentiation, um, I haven't actually confirmed. We might actually be able to solve for y in this specific example. That's really not kind of the point I'm trying to make here. The point is typically when you're doing implicit differentiation, the reason that you have to do it is, or the, the situation where you have to use implicit differentiation in order to find dy dx or dx dt or whatever the derivative they're trying to tell you to find is, is because you can't isolate y. You can't isolate your function letter all by itself on one side of the equation with your variable all on the other side. You can't separate them. So that's why we have to use implicit differentiation because we we only have like an implicit and implied function for y. We know how x and y are related and this equation would imply that there is some like function for y that would make this equation equal. It, you know, make the left side equal the right side. But since we can't algebraically isolate the y, we can't get the y all by itself, we have to take the derivative implicitly, like based on that, that implication that there is such a function without explicitly being able to use that function. So that's kind of where that, the actual wording implicit differentiation comes from and the situation where we have to use it. Now, I kind of got a little off track there, but the point I'm making here is if we're trying to take the derivative of some unknown function of x all squared, since we don't know what this function of x is, we can't possibly know the derivative of this function of x, which sounds weird, but what that means is, what it allows us to do is, when we take this derivative, we have to, first of all, use the chain rule in this case because we have a composite function, right? We have some function of x, all in parentheses raised up to the second power. So we have kind of this inside function f of x and then this outside function raising it up to the second power. So we have to do chain rule, okay? So chain rule says we would take the derivative of the outside function, we would use power rule to bring the two down in front, leave our base as it is, so leave f of x as f of x, and then subtract one from the power, meaning we would have f of x raised up to the first power, which is just f of x. So I'll just leave that as f of x, okay? And then chain rule says we then have to multiply that by the derivative of our inside function. So we would have to multiply it by the derivative of f of x, which is just f prime of x. So the other thing that this, this allows us to do the fact that we don't actually know what our function y is and we just have some unknown f of x, what this allows us to do is just say that the derivative of y squared is just two times our function y, which is what this f of x is, times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. So basically we, we kind of get to take a, an easy way out because we don't actually have to find the derivative of y or the derivative of this inside function when we apply the chain rule here to find the derivative of this y squared term. And we wouldn't have to either if we were taking the derivative of y times x or minus 2y or all this here because we don't know what y is. So we don't have to actually find the derivative of that y term. We can actually just, you know, instead of saying the derivative of whatever that y is, we can just say this little symbol here, dy dx, which literally just means the derivative of y with respect to x. But what you really need to be sure that you're doing is applying the chain rule 
or the product rule or the quotient rule or something like that whenever you have some term that has a y in it right because y is always some unknown function of x so what i like to do personally is instead of thinking about basically how to take the derivative of the function that we're given let me just erase, erase this and write it down here instead of thinking about taking the derivative of this whole thing up here what i like to do is think of it as taking the derivative of basically just replacing your y with f of x so we have some function f of x times x for this term right here then we have minus 2 times f of x okay then we have x squared times sine of x times some unknown function f of x and what this allows you to do is kind of match these different things to different derivative tricks from there different formulas that you may know for different derivative tricks like for example this right here makes it pretty clear we're going to have to do the product <clears throat> excuse me sorry about that this right here makes it pretty straightforward that we're going to have to do the product rule right because we have some function f of x times some other function which is just x in this case so we can do product rule treating one of our functions as f of x one as x this right here we could actually just take the derivative using you know the derivative of some constant times f of x it's just the constant times the derivative of the function okay and then uh, over here we could again use product rule product rule with three terms that's a little bit of a, an extra process but the point is is there right we have these this treating our function letter as a function of your variable treating y as f of x instead of treating it as y so make sure that you're making that distinction and make sure that whenever you're applying this you know derivative step to something that has whatever your function letter is that you're treating it as a function of your variable right so if we had some context clue that told us actually x was our function and y was our variable so if we knew that we had our function as x and our variable was y for whatever reason maybe it told us to find dx dy instead of dy dx then we would have to treat x as a function of y and then things like uh, y squared would just be the power rule right we could just bring the two down in front since y would be our variable in this case and then things like x squared would have to be treated as some function of y squared and then we would have to do you know two times f of y times f prime of y which would be two times x times d x dy okay so make sure sorry that's an x there it should be a y make sure you're kind of making that distinction and keeping straight what's your variable and what letter is a function of that variable so i hope that helps clear up that mistake i'm sure that's a mistake you've made i like i said i know i made that mistake a bunch when i was learning implicit differentiation it takes a lot of getting used to to get past that um, but i think it really helps to kind of write that out and keep it separate uh, keep it straight as you're you're working through it until you get used to it at least um, eventually it will start to come more naturally i promise as you start to practice it more and more um, but when you're first starting out i think this would really help keep that straight for you and help you get the right answer a lot more often hey you made it to the end of the video based on that i'm guessing you probably found this video pretty helpful if so do me a favor go hit that like button down below and that subscribe button and bell icon while you're down there those are both a huge help to my channel so i can keep making more videos like this and so we can keep crushing it in calculus together all term long my next video that's coming out is going to be about how to avoid common mistakes that i see in the end of an implicit differentiation problem so that you can be sure you're getting to the right answer at the end be sure to come back for that one. And if you are watching this video after it comes out, I'll come back and put a card right over there so you can go check that out. Thanks and see you next time.